Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, the Kryptonian, saying here, bringing you guys a review for One Piece Chapter 867. And I got to start with the SBS Corner, because, you know, Oda decided to show us what Big Mom looked like when Big Mom was in her prime. So Big Mom at age 28. Mm. Big Mom could have low-key got it. She could have low-key got it, but at age 48, absolutely not. And at age 68, hell no. But now you can kind of understand why she had so many babies, though, because, like, it, it, it took a toll on her body. Holy shit, did she ever hit the wall? <laughs> oh, man. So, yo, getting right back into it, though, getting right back into the chapter review. I got to say, I got to say, man, so... The fact that you got Charlotte, right, Big Mom, and you got Mother Caramel, and Mother Caramel's been selling kids, now it makes sense what Big Mom's doing. Well, she was doing it with Punk Hazard and everything and having those kids experiment on. Now it makes sense. She's simply doing what she knows that Mother Caramel was doing. So, I mean, now I'm kind of seeing why Big Mom is the person she is. And it really sucks for her when you really think about it because essentially her own family abandoned her and then her adopted family that seemingly saved her from being killed off at Elba, all of a sudden they abandoned her at the end of this chapter. Like... Now I get why she has trust issues. Now I get why she's as uh, overpowering as she is. And what I find so interesting is, once again, the world government is right back in the freight. Once again, the world government is like, yeah, you know, we bought you know John Giant from you. You know, uh, you're right. Big Mom could be useful to us in Cypher Pool. She could be useful to us uh, as a admiral one day or a fleet a fleet admiral vice admiral you know she's got the potential to rise through the ranks and it's absolutely true because she's so fucking strong like at the age of five she damn near wiped out the village of giants and it's because she was in those hunger pains and it's one of those things where you know i understand mother caramel i i totally understand it because you know she's looking at big mom and she realizes that this is somebody who if everything breaks right this could be my last big score. And she's absolutely right to think of her in that respect because it's kind of like if you got like LeBron James as a son. You know, like, holy, holy shit, this kid's really talented at basketball. I might need to groom this kid because he could go places. Well, in this case, she's looking at it a little different. She sees uh, Charlotte as being more of a of a meal ticket. But, you know, she does have an eye for talent, and she's absolutely right. The sky is the limit at that point. And, you know, when Big Mom is just, you know, going through all of those hunger pains and and she's having Caramel basically beg for her release, saying, hey, please don't kill her. She's only a child. She doesn't know any better. Please, please spare her. And what's so crazy about that is the fact that uh, Mother Caramel was basically putting on a front. The only reason why she didn't care about the other children, excuse me, the only reason why she cared about uh, Big Mom was the fact that she saw her as the last big score to get her out the game. Like, it wasn't because she was this holier-than-thou woman who's, you know, basically being Mary Poppins and saving kids and going into orphanage. That's not what she was doing. She even went so far as to say, I need to take her and put her on this remote island and start over simply for the fact that, like, I need to make sure that she's going to be ready for these suitors and it'd be a lot easier if the government can come to me and not have to come to this island. Like, it's absolutely crazy that we got to this point. And just to see the, the change in the character where one minute she's smiling and, you know, Oda writes, you know, on that day, her smile grew warmer. And as she strived to get worried, as she strived to get the worried children at ease, you're thinking, oh, wow, okay, this is a really nice person. And then all of a sudden you see her with the cigarette in the mouth and the smoke billowing all over the place. And she says, like, just consider it. She had the talent to lay the village of Elba half to waste. But this is the asking price. Surely it's not beyond your means. And it's just like, holy shit, the world government is also involved in the black market. Like, this is a basically what that is. And she says, she says, I've been in the kid selling business for years, and she's the best product I've ever had. Remember, I arranged the Navy, the Navy and I arranged that little stunt 37 years ago. You know, children, they make the 
they make the best spies, especially if they're orphans. You know, they have no family history. There's no strings attached. You can use them, and they're disposable. Like, it's so crazy to hear her talking like this. It's so crazy to hear her just getting to this point. And it really makes you look at what Caesar was doing, and you kind of understand, like, okay, Big Mom was directing him in that, that respect as well from the shadows, just in the same way that... Just in the same way that, like, uh, Joker and Kaido were basically ones bankrolling everything, you know, Big Mom had interest in that drug as well. So, I mean, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy just to see how far Oda is just diving into the whole thing with what we have with the dark web. Like, there are a lot of parallels in this new world where it comes to the need to protect children. And then you see the darker side here with human trafficking and slavery and uh, selling children. Like, it's so crazy that Oda's touched on a lot of this stuff while hiding it in the confines of a fictional world that's dealing with pirates like it's so crazy to see what Otis doing here and what I like about this fact is the fact that you know in Big Mom you know we continue to see the evolution where it's getting to a point where you're very slowly starting to sympathize with her and you just see her mentally start to break as she's reliving one of the worst days of her life and that's when you get to the current moment where Big Mom screaming and Luffy's there and it's one of those things where, you know, Big Mom saying, Mother, where did you go? And it's just like when she finally breaks out of that, when Big Mom finally breaks out, Luffy's going to be in for a world of trouble. But my question to you guys is going to be, how did you feel about what you saw here with Mother Caramel? You know, did you see that coming? Because I'll be honest with you, I didn't see her being necessarily the child seller i didn't see that but i want to know what you guys think about that but as always guys if you like anything i had to say don't forget to comment rate subscribe and share thank you so much for watching until the end have an awesome day guys